Hey, come closer. I got a little secret for you. Shh. Lindsay Lohan starring in a new movie. And it's garbage. <laughs> Who could have guessed? Who could have guessed that in 2024, Lindsay Lohan, who recently starred in a movie about Irish wishes, would be in another pile of shit Netflix streaming exclusive. Wild. Let's talk about our little secret. <music> Lindsay Lohan plays Avery. She has a boyfriend. A boy who used to be a friend, but has become more in years time. They had a magical relationship growing up together, which turned into something more serious. In fact, it was so serious, Logan got down on one knee ready to propose in front of all their friends and family. He should have maybe read the room first or just taken a second to take a look at her face, which is almost entirely expressionless because of all the work done over the years. However, I could still figure out that Lindsay Lohan, not so into it, not so into the idea, and she gives him a proposition back, proposition marked fuck you, and bails on the guy, moving across the country and through time itself, as we will be transported 10 years into the future, where she's a working girl in the city, and he's a working guy in somewhere, and they've both moved on with their relationships. But before we get there, I'd appreciate if you subscribe to the channel. Adam does movies, like this video, even leave a comment if you want as I post movie reviews every single week. Would love to have you stick around. And I'm also gonna point out there's gonna be um, maybe spoilers. I'm not sure where I'm gonna go with the review. It's all very loosey goosey. It's, it's, it's very free flowing. We'll find out. You know what else was kind of free flowing this movie? The uh, way they presented everything. Let me paint you a picture, fam, in case you don't wanna watch this, which you absolutely should not. If you've ever seen an episode of Curious George or that pile of shit, Caillou, I'm Caillou, I'm Caillou, I hate you, Caillou. Sorry, brought back some <laughs> nom flashbacks of when my kids were younger and I saw that in the TV in the background and wanted to kill myself at every waking minute. Uh, this movie is going to start with that presentation. We're going to get a white screen with some crappy animations showing how these two lovebirds fell in love, and then I guess out of love because uh, Avery did not want to settle down. She had her whole life ahead of her and didn't want to be bogged down by Logan because Logan's Logan, yeah, kind of lame, he's milk toast at best. We are then going to go from this kind of carefree, fanciful, children's book-esque story where we get some credits, we get some character names, we get the title, comes up in a whimsical font to then completely different titling when we put the date at the bottom of the screen, which was, I don't know, 2014, I think is when it starts. And then we get a third set of typography and title cards. We go from freaking storybook shit to this crappy scene at the house party with other font treatment to the third set of titling which is horrendous, and I'm almost positive it was created with AI. <laughs> this is hilarious. We, we get the uh, I love you, I don't scene, and then we are tra we're transported through time through these shitty Photoshop file PowerPoint presentation shots. 2014, 2015, 2016, 20, and, all, and up and up. And we get shots of like Bernie Sanders in the mask meme. And we get Elon Musk behind one of his dumbass cyber trucks. And we get a few other shots as we're taken to 2024. And I didn't realize at the time this was happening, because, uh, you know, I'm not, I'm not all in on this movie right out of the gates, that it started only 10 years Richard Pryor. Because why the fuck would you do a, a timeline transition like this for only 10 years. I thought at minimum, it was a 30 year jump. Then it makes sense. But 10 years, are you kid Are you out of your fucking mind with that? And again, I am, I'm a stickler for consistency. And so when not even 10 minutes into the movie, you have given me three different title treatments, I'm, I'm having a hard time believing in you. I'm having a hard time seeing the passion, seeing the dedication, the devotion, and the focus and I'm not gonna be very invested in the rest of the movie. But I pressed forward, I pushed through. And what I got was a pretty awful affair. 
We have a, a premise that on its face is pretty standard formulaic stuff, especially if you've seen a bunch of Hallmark Christmas movies or just really anything in general in the rom-com vicinity. Because what's going to happen is Avery and Logan have moved on in these 10 years. They have good jobs. They have new boyfriends and girlfriends. But there is one thing that's going to bring these two dipshits together 10 years later. It's a family reunion. It's a Christmas miracle. The people they're dating are siblings. So we are going to come together under one roof and these two are gonna see each other again. Are sparks gonna fly? Are emotions gonna run high? Or is Avery gonna pull a wild card move and say, Logan? Mm -hmm. Never heard of him. <laughs> Who is this guy? He seems like a card. No, I've never heard of Logan before. Yeah, she thinks on her feet and says, uh, a big lie. And so now hijinks is of course gonna ensue as they pretend like they don't know each other and they get into all sorts of misadventures that really aren't that adventurous or exciting. And clearly this movie had a budget of about 65 bucks and expired gift card to Red Robin. Kristen Chenoweth from Wicked, the, the Broadway musical, is the only real solid player in this whole thing. She's the evil mom, has a lot of money, a lot of wealth. She's really into herself. Gets the same picture, the same portrait painted every year where they put a spotlight around her and everyone else is kind of faded out in the distance, the rest of the family. She was kind of funny, led to some decent hijinks. There's one part of the movie that I got a couple chuckles out of, and it's when Avery pinned some cookies she ate on the dog. Uh, the dog ate like six cookies, and she said to the mom, I didn't eat these, the dog got into them. And the mom's freaking out, she's like, we gotta take the dog to the vet. And then Avery has to explain to the vet secretly that she actually ate the cookies and she pinned it on the dog. And the doctor is the same dude that always plays a doctor. He's Dr. Spaceman in 30 Rock, but I'm getting off topic. In either case, this five minute sequence was kind of all right. I'm like, oh, there's some humor here. Funnier than anything I saw in Dear Santa. So that's that's something we're at. We're at the bottom of the barrel in terms of humor and what it means anymore to laugh. Now, of course, for every chuckle, every smile on the face, which I would count probably a total of four, you have some of the most cringy, brutal scenes known to man uh, on this miserable rock we call home. One specifically is where Avery ingests some gummies. That joke's not old yet, right? The, the gummy I'm high as a kite joke. And she goes to church where she has to give a little speech, a little, uh, I don't know, you know, celebration of life conversation with everyone in attendance. This leads to her quoting a song. I can't actually remember the song it is, but not much later, people start standing up and singing the song. And next thing you know, the whole church is involved and it's this great thing. And my eyes rolled off of my face and onto the ground. And after that, I was blind and I was actually happy. The only sad thing is I wasn't deaf too, because I had to hear what was happening and it wasn't good. By the time this uh, pile of ass winds down, there's a lot of secrets revealed. It turns out uh, there's affairs taking place. Everyone's kind of garbage. So their lies, not the biggest deal in the world. And wouldn't you know it, Avery's boyfriend is kind of garbage. He's cheating on her. This makes it easier for Avery to get back with Logan and not look like a piece of shit person for bailing on her current boyfriend. You have to do that in these types of dumb movies. You have to make sure the person they're with is trash so it's easier to get rid of them and the audience doesn't lose any sort of sympathy for you. And in fact, they're actually rooting for you more. And so, shocker, Avery and Logan get together and then we are whisked back to that storybook ending. The Curious George style came back for one shot as they're tying the knot. How does this tie into Christmas? Not very much at all. They go to a Christmas farm at one point. That's about it. They go to a Christmas farm, pick out a tree. Nothing funny happens there, but that's about as Christmassy as you have. Uh, there's a tree that's decorated. There's some Christmas lights. Otherwise, it's completely superficial. This could have taken place at Thanksgiving. This could have taken place at Easter. Nothing would have changed in the story. And the fact that in 2024, I still have to see stupid, immature idiots online saying Die Hard isn't a Christmas movie, but they're going to call this a Christmas film? I call bullshit. 
Die Hard is very much centered around the Christmas theme. You have jokes playing off of it. You have, I, I'm not getting into it, okay? I already have a video on my channel defending it and it, it's about as Christmas as a Christmas movie can be, in my personal opinion, which is the right one, of course. Thoughts on the film overall, bad. It's an hour 40, um, nothing spicy really happening. The jokes don't land very well outside of a little doggy section, which again, it's not even that good. It's just, in terms of this movie, it's a chuckle and that's about it. Acting from Lohan, um, mediocre. Like there's not much for her to do here. She's the same in every one of these movies she happens to get a starring role in in the last couple years. Just shows up. Maybe there's a Mean Girls reference just for good measure. Uh, I don't think they're gonna be talking about Herbie fully loaded or anything. Not quite at the same level as a Mean Girls, her, her claim to fame and parent trap, of course, when she was like seven years old. But no, this is what we have now. This is what Netflix is providing. Just really bottom of the barrel, trashy Christmas movies for us to put on while we make cookies or forget the TV's even running anymore. Because TVs run like, a, like an oven, I guess, in, in my mind. Okay, let me know your thoughts. Like this video. Again, think of subscribing. It is the season. Let me know if you saw this thing, the train wreck that is our little secret. They didn't even play Dirty Little Secret by All American Rejects, which honestly pissed me off. But then when I saw the movie, I'm like, no, it's for the best. Don't tarnish that song with this ugly affair. All right, that's all I got for you. Hopefully I see you next time for another Christmas review. I got several in the hopper and none of them are good. I mean, the reviews are good, but not the, not the movies. All right, see you next time. Take care.